Hey, Coach. So, you know, I was thinking, uh, people ask me, you know, what's the best offense to run for uh, youth football? And, you know, in my mind, there's no doubt. So, you know, I know people like the spread offense. Um, it's exciting. It's popular. And it's effective. It's good. It's got good concepts. And it's been proven not to have good concepts. You know, I think back in the, you know, it wasn't too long ago, maybe, I don't know, 20 years ago, you know, people line up in the spread and you got, you know, you got your outside linebacker out there, you know, I don't know, number 58 with the neck roll and he's a covering slot guy and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was, you know, ahead of his time. Now it's not so much, you know, you got athletes, anybody, you know, outside the box is an athlete, it's more of a safety walk down. Uh, and you got guys that, you know, it's a lot of seven on seven. And anyways, I think defending the spread, the concepts of defend the spread or, you know, from my opinion, at least where we are, you start day one on defense. Nowadays, you're, you got two safeties on the field, and you're you're covering two by two. Um, back in the day, it wasn't that, that wasn't the case. You start out with you know, defending the eye formation. Now, where you are, it might be different. You know, spread might still have a jump on defenses out there, but you know, pretty much everybody around here, we're in California. You know, most teams uh, in our state run spread offense. And, you know, and I think youth football guys, you know, historically have always just copied what they see on TV more than anything. And, and for good reason. I mean, the spread's a good offense. I mean, especially if you got, if you got a great quarterback, you know, or if he could beat you with his, his feet or his arm or both, you know, you got guys spread out and, you know, the, the defense, might, you know, the defense alignment, the youth football, you know, they don't, for the most part, don't move. They don't cover that much ground. Um, so it's, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of reason to, to like the spread offense. I mean, especially if you, if you coach it right and you got the right personnel, you know, it could be dangerous. You're putting the defense in a bind. You know, there's no doubt about that. What I don't like about it to me, it's like, like a fifth gear offense, right? When you got momentum and you're rolling, it's, it's fantastic. It's exciting. It's, uh, it's effective and you get big plays out of it and stuff, but you know, when, when going gets tough and you really need to get some first downs and stuff, it's uh, it can be a little tricky. It can be a little tricky. I mean, I think there's some de the defense has some room to to play games and the defense kind of dictates what you're going to do when you're in the spread. I mean, if you want to take away the run, you know, if if we line up in the spread and you want to take the the run away from us, and at least the 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 talent is somewhat matched up, you know then we're not going to be able to run the ball. We have to, we have to pass the ball. And that's, and especially even in high school football, when you, when the answer is the pat, when the answer to a problem is the pass for us, I don't like that. I don't like that. Now, some guys do a great job. They have good quarterbacks, they have great receivers. They do a great job, um, you know, developing them. And I'll say this, you know, especially in high school football, you know, guys are getting a little bit more talented. I mean, more, uh, the skilled players a little bit are a little bit better. Yeah, because you're doing seven on seven all summer, um, and there's there's more passing in the game, <clears throat> so so guys are executing the pass game a little bit better. Uh, I'll say that. But with youth football, it's to me it's tough. It's just tough. I mean, you better have a good quarterback in my in my mind, and some guys that can catch the ball. But what happens even if you have a good quarterback? You know. I mean, even if he can run, I'm still, if, you know, I can still dominate the box if I want. If you only got one, one real threat, you know, you, you high low him or bracket him in and out, or, you know, you could take away, if you only got one guy that could really threaten you and you're going to let the other three receivers, you know, have at him. Um, I mean, you could, what are you going to do? I'm going to shut down the run and with, with, with people. And I'm going to take away the matchup. Now, if you got two or three guys out there and you can run the ball and you got a good line, yeah, you're going to be tough. You're going to be tough. There's no doubt about it. But, you know, so, uh, so another another popular offense is the wing tee. And I like the wing tee. I love the wing tee. People, you know, I think uh, at least where we're at, you know, people don't like it. But it's a good offense. It's a steady offense. It's a good offense. And, you know, if people say, well, it's a system offense. Well, you know, I think every every offense should be a system, some type of system, and have concepts that, that you believe in, um, repeatable concepts. But, you know, 
guys are getting better at, you know, even if you're a wing T guy, you can run the wing T, but you can still have a spread package in there. You can have a package where guys will do, can do, you know, multiple things. Um, I just like it. It's effective. You can hit multiple points of attack. Multiple guys are, are carrying the ball. Um, it's a team offense, which I think is more effective, um, especially at, you know, the high school and youth football. Any type of team offense, you're going to have be, uh, I think it's just more effective. In the long run, it's just more effective. You know, I know in the NFL, in college, you're, you're recruiting or paying guys to just make plays, you know, just to make plays, make the coach look good. You know, when you got guys like that, then, hey, you know, we all know that. You got you got a special player. Special player is going to make you look good. No doubt about it. But and if you got, you live in a place where all you have is special players, spread everybody out, give it to a special player, and let it make you look good. I understand that. Believe me. But, uh, you know, some of us aren't as fortunate. And we have guys, maybe just good, tough, average kids that will do some things for you, that will work hard for you and, uh, and play football. And we got to win like that. So, um, you know, so anyways, I like the wing tee for a lot of reasons. Uh, what I don't like about it is it's just a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocking. I don't like relying on just one-on-one -on -one blocking because, you know, you get a mismatch, then you got a kid that's no good, you know. You know, the defensive tackle is just going to be walking up field and then the other guy's going to be hanging off his shoulder. So it's just a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocking. You, you got to be precise, even on their, their base stuff. It's just a lot of one-on-one -on -one blocking. When that wing comes down on the DN or the outside backer, there's a lot of space out there. Just always guys, guys that coach it, coach it well. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you got they're running, they're running buck sweep, and those guards, they're gonna get around that block. I mean, we've done it. We've we've done it on defense where we try to, you know, try to, you know, get inside the wings block and try to get upfield, you know, and those guards, they'll 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 <laughs> they'll belly around like six yards deep just to get around that block. And uh, you know, if that's what you believe in. You know, I know it drives it, as a, as a um, coach in defense that drives me crazy. It's just hard to get to that guy like that. So we don't even try anymore, to be honest with you. We do we do other we you know defend them in different ways, but um, you know, but in guys that do it, they they coach it well. But for me, I mean, that's just like I got some wing back and he's supposed to block this outside guy, and what if he goes down and the guy like cross faces him and or you know he kind of dekes him and cross faces him or what if he, he charges hard inside he's got to block that to me it just makes me nervous it's just not that we don't do that block but that's their main play I mean, that's their number one play and it's all single blocks and then their off tackle play it's all single blocks you know it's a great offense don't get me wrong it's they're driving nuts trying to trying to finish try to defend it and if you don't have speed at the second level you're going to be in trouble, <laughs> you know, they'll, and if they got talent, you're going to be in trouble because they can hit so many points of attack and, you know, it's just, um, they can do, they have key breakers. Anyways, if you try to defend the wing T against a good wing T team, you know, it's difficult. And, uh, and I, I recommend it. If you, I mean, I think it's a good offense, but I don't, I wouldn't say it's my, my favorite offense. You look at uh, option football, option football, when it's done right, it's it looks like almost impossible to stop. I mean, the the offense linemen seem like as long as they fire out low and hard, and just block the guy for a, like you know a quarter of a second, the ball's right by him. You know, we did option one, we did option two years, just to try something different, and uh, and that's what really sold me on it. You know, we're creating space with our alignment. We're going to spread out the offensive line, and uh, you know we're just going to get fire off low and hard. We don't have to really hold the block. It's quick, and uh, Man, and we, I thought it was some of our best practices we ever had was when we coached option football. We had a, we had like a skeleton drill that we started every practice with. And uh, my thought, man, I thought, you know, I thought I was coach of the year. I mean, I thought it was the best drill. We, and we stole it, obviously. We did our research and, and got it from good good option teams. We have uh, De La Salle's pretty close to us. And then we figured, what I do like about it, I'll say this, if you could run the ball, if you, the more receivers you can have on the field and still be able to run the ball, that's that's that has value. OK, uh, if you could run the ball really like Oregon back in the day, they were a running team. They were spread, but they were a running team. You know, they had you know they had speed everywhere. They had speed at running back, speed at quarterback. And they got four receivers out there and, uh, and they were able to carve up defenses. And then if you try to overplay the run, you know, they got. 
you know, they got superstars on the outside. And yeah, one on one matchups. And it's just, they made it tough. They made it tough. So the more you can, the more you, the more receivers you can have on the field and still be able to run the ball effectively, even when they know it's coming, the better off you're going to be. I will say that. I'll admit that. We do the opposite. We don't, for the, we're kind of known for not having a lot of receivers out there. But, uh, but no, we, we do, we have packages where we do uh, have receivers and stuff. And I like that. I like, I love that stuff. I mean, when it's working, it's fantastic. I love it. But, um, and that's why we kind of went to, we went to the Veer because we could still have two, three receivers out there and, and be able to run the ball. That was the idea. But I don't know. It just didn't, it just didn't work, work out well for us. Not, I mean, it worked out, it worked out fine. We, you know, we won some ball games and did some nice things. And, um, if the defense you know, was kind of sitting how we like them to be, we, we carve them up pretty good. But, you know, for my money, what's always been the best to us has been power football. And power football is they just can't take nothing away from you. I mean, you know, if you can for if you could force your way, if you could force your way, they know it's coming. You could just force your way down the field. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? I mean, you're not going to make any mistakes. It's the most simplest type of football to execute you know it takes a lot of work it might be hard after you know to get to get to where make it simple but but once you got it down um especially if you follow our system i mean it's we make it super simple and not 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 generic and weak powerful simple and powerful and it gets a little bit technical in there um but you just have to be able to kind of you have to be there's so many people in there that if anybody does the wrong thing, it's almost like dominoes, you know, is everybody's going to fall over, you know, everybody's got to get to the right spots. Okay, to to, uh, to create a running lane. But but if you got everybody on the same page, you know how to communicate, you know how to identify, you know, who's who and what you're going to do to them. Um, and then it looks it's just so simple. At, after that, it's just so simple. They can't stop you. They can't stop you. Unless they're way better than you. You know, and if they're better than you in one spot, they are probably not better than you in another spot. And uh, so they have to, you know, you know, they have to commit all their forces to, to one area. Then, you know, that creates weaknesses in, in other areas. But if they're better than you everywhere else and they're way better than you everywhere else, then, you know, you're just going to get smashed and that's football. But, um, but I will say this, though, even if they're way better than you, if you can still force away a little bit and get first down, you're going to be running out the clock. And you're not going to get you're not going to you know, if you're in a spread then you're you're passing the ball, you know, left and right. And uh, they're way better than you. Then you're going to go three and out. You're not taking any time off the clock, and it's going to get ugly fast. It's going to get ugly fast. So, but in power football, even if they're better than you, and they're way better than you, and you get some first downs, you're going to keep the game close, you know. And then if you can kind of do something, uh, you know, like a little trick play, or you know, I will say this too, you know, it might be counter to to what you might think, or you, you know, maybe not you, but so other people, you know, if you're in a power set. You're you're better. You're in a better position to to for the long pass. You know, if you're if you got four or five receivers out there, defense is going to be guarding a pass, and it's more better for dinking and dunking. You know, hitting your hitting your little spots in the zone or whatever. Um, but if you got power, if you're in a if you're running a power football and the defense has to commit to the line of scrimmage, and you got an athlete out there, you don't need a great quarterback. I mean, even I could throw a fade, you know, or a post. You know, a one-on-one -on -one matchup, how hard is that? You know, the hard part about playing quarterback is just, you know, reading the defense and making sure you see what the safeties are doing. And, you know, you got you got a lot of, you know, you got a lot going on over there. And plus, so you got to be, you know, keep your eyes off the defense line. They're they're trying to kill you. So uh, being playing quarterback is tough, but just throwing a one-on-one -on -one route, if you can't do that, I mean, there's got to be somebody on your team that can throw a one-on-one -on -one route. And, uh, you know. That's easy. That's not really playing quarterback. That's just playing catch. So, um, so you, anyways, you run a power football, you can get some big plays. You know, the fade route, uh, post, you know, there's a couple, there's a few routes that it's just easy. It's just easy to throw, throw and catch. And they're going to, it's going to, it's going to be effective. So, um, anyways, that's what we like. I know, you know, you know, any type of running offense, you know, guys that, you know, the rub on it is that, you know, you can't really come back. I remember watching, uh, I was a big Oklahoma Sooner fan in the in the 80s, 
and they always said, you know, the, the, the wishbone, you know, you can't really, you can't really uh, uh, come from behind. It's not a good offense for coming from behind. And, you know, I thought, yeah, okay, it makes sense, whatever, when I was a kid. But when I got older, I realized, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a good running team and you're playing somebody that you can beat, you're not going to fall behind because it's so consistent, it's so dependable, you're executing out of the box. There's no high level of difficulty. If you're better than them, you're executing out of the box. And you're going to score right away. You're going to score early, and you're going to score often. And then once you have a lead, you got two or three touchdown lead, you're just getting the first downs from there. Even if you don't, you know, you get a long, if you get a long drive, even if you don't score, it don't matter. It's got a ton of value. You got the lead, you run off a ton of time off the clock, and you just squeeze life out of them, you know. And anyways, main point I'm making is that if you're if you're a good running team and you're playing somebody that you should beat, you're not falling, you're not falling behind. Okay. If you're a spread, you're doing some high level of difficulty. I've been there. We played a team and it was uh two of us were the offense coordinator. We're playing down there, and he was kind of like the uh the pass guy, and I was supposed to be the run guy. And uh and he's kind of in it, what it ended up being, he was kind of like the spread guy, and I was kind of the, the eye guy. And um, we ran, you know, we'd run, we're running, you know, power ISO, play action pass, quick stuff. And um, he's running spread and all that, all that entails and stuff. And the guy knew what he was doing. He was, you know, he was a great player himself, he was a great coach. And I know he's, you know, he coached some semi pro team that won the national championship and they're scoring 100 points a game, whatever. But we're in this high school team. We have pretty good players, we had pretty good players, pretty good receivers, good quarterback. We're sitting there playing this team that I mean, I'm like we should, if we were if we were running the ball we'd be we'd beat them eighty to nothing. I mean it'd be a joke, eighty to nothing. But it was they're hanging tight. It was like a neck and neck ball game because we're running spread. We do some good things, do some good things, and when it matters we drop the ball on third down, or you know you get a holding call, or we're just whatever. We just couldn't get out of our own way, and that's just kind of how the spread works. When it, when it's all clicking, and you're executing, it all looks good, especially if you're better than the other team. But you know, it's just so much that can go wrong with it. And anyways, my point is you could be running the spread or some type of, you know, offense with a high level of difficulty and you could fall behind against a team that you're better than, you know, and then, yeah, you'll come back to them. You're in a perfect, you're in a perfect kind of offense to come back to them. Plus you're better than them. And yeah, comebacks make sense. But if you're a running team and you're playing somebody you should beat, you're not going to fall behind. You're just not going to do it. I mean, you know, theoretically, it's plausible that, you know, I don't know, you fumble or, you know, you get a holding call at the wrong time. And you just keep kicking yourself in the foot, you know, or, you know, whatever. Anyways, it's plausible, but it's just, I'm just telling you, it just don't happen. It just don't happen. I think like twice we lost, I think we lost in, I've been doing this for 29 years. I think we lost two times against teams we should have beat the first time. We had beaten that team so bad. I was a young coach. I got excited, and we kind of run up the score a little bit on them. The next year, we got up early on them. I felt bad the whole offseason. We got up on them big. The next year, pulled everybody out. Next thing you know, they start getting momentum. Uh, then we try to put guys back in, and then we just couldn't get, you know, just – we just couldn't get it restarted. And so they came back and beat us at the end. They were just running a wedge. We couldn't even stop their wedge play. This is uh, playing youth football. And um, it happened. Okay. And then another time, it was uh, I, had a, I had a good team. I can't remember what happened. We just, I think we just kind of overlooked them. We just overlooked them and just didn't score right away like we normally do. And just couldn't, for whatever reason, just kept messing up. And uh, they beat us. They beat us. And, and um, anyway, we didn't win a championship that year, too. So I mean, it's only happened a couple times in like 29 years. And now I haven't been the head coach every every year, 29 years. So, you know, the whatever years, maybe what maybe 16 years, however long I've been a head coach, the youth and high school football. It's happened two times or we lost to somebody that that we were better than um, you're just not going to fall behind on a team that's better than you or when a team that you're better than. And you just come out the box, you score, because while they're still trying to get used to the game, you're just like, boom, 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 and score. You just push them around and score. It's easy. And if they're better than you, well, that's why you're behind. You're probably not going to catch up. You know? Now, I agree. If, you, if, you, if you're playing someone that's better than you, 
you do have a chance at some big plays maybe if you if you, you gamble, but you also have a great chance of uh, losing 50 to nothing because you're trying to do these things downfield, you know, and you don't score. It's three and out. They get the ball. They have the ball the whole game, and uh, it gets ugly quick. It gets ugly quick. And the only way you're not losing 80 to nothing is if they got a little bit of class and they're not trying to run it up on you, you know. But, you know, for my money, especially in youth football, power type scheme where you can force your way it's easy to execute there's no high level of difficulty um i think it raises the level of your players they get confident they get you know they feel good about themselves they feel tough they start playing tough they feel like their efforts are going to be rewarded they can see it on film it's a team effort you know um and guys it just picks them up it just picks them up and you know if you go to high school football you know i it still work for us. That kind of football still work for us and it's worked for other people. I will say this, in high school football especially, I'm not discounting youth football, uh, but especially in high school football, you should have some multiple packages you, for different situations. You, you know, the kids are older, you should be able to throw the ball and um, be able to, you know, have packages that match the situation. But for us still, we made way more money off of power football, even in high school football. And when we were playing against teams that were better than us, we just get low first downs, first downs, sucked the air out of the clock and kept it close. Kids got respect, they didn't get embarrassed. Um, and it's good, it's just good football. So that's my, if you get into, if you're coaching in youth football, yeah, you're, you know, and you're looking for, you're looking for something, you know, first of all, I think you need to be able to run the ball well. Pass ball all you want. Once you establish a good foundation, you want to pass. You got a, you know, you got, you got a matchup nightmare out there. You got a kid that can play quarterback, or it's just something that you like, and go and then go for it, go for it, pass the ball a little bit. But um, it's fun, it's fun. But, but I'm just telling you, if you want to win games, there's nothing that is a better, more consistent payoff than power football, because what you do in practice is going to uh, it's going to translate to success on the field so much more uh it's so much more dependable you know from my experience so dude time is so much more well spent on power on power football and practice to translate to the games and to have success in the games you have a nice solid power football approach and you coach it right you got to coach it hard you got to coach it hard it's not now i'm not i don't want to throw shade on spread coaches those are some great, great, great coaches, like great. If you want to do it right, you got to be a great coach. But there is some, you know, you see it where the guys just say, hey, just go out there and just kind of, you know, give it to the athletes and let them go and stuff like that. Well, if you got the athletes that can do it, then uh, then go for it. Then go for it. But, um, but uh, you know, if you want a team approach and you want to run power football, and, and you're committed to it and you want to coach it right and get to the details. And I'm not saying it's complicated, but you just got to be dedicated to the details and you can't be loosey goosey and say, you know, Oh, whatever. No, the kids have to do what you tell them to do. And as long as they do that, you show them on film when they don't, you know, cause that's how these kids are. You know, it, you know, there's 21 other kids out there. They feel like what I do is not very important. I'm going to, I'm just going to get lost in the wash. But if you show them on film, you didn't do what we asked you to do, and this was the result, and you and you sell them on, you sell them that that uh, that what you're telling them is going to work, and when you can show them that it works, it's going to fill them with so much confidence, and it's a, a powerful, powerful feeling. The kids are going to be, they're going to, they're going to, you know, they're going to gather together and feel like, hey, it's us against the world. We could take on anybody. And uh, and even if they're better, you go to you go to play some superstar team with you know great athletes and this and that, and you take them into the trenches and just beat them up. I mean, you feel like you can do that against everybody, just anybody. Don't care. I don't care if they're undefeated, scoring a million points. The papers are writing about them. It don't matter. You could take them into the trenches, execute your concepts. It's a team approach, and and they they got each other's back, and they know exactly what's expected of them. Man, you could win championships. I mean, you could win championships like that. So, anyways, that's my two cents. You know, hopefully it helps. Um, 
there's there's a million ways to skin to skin a cat. That's just me talking um, from my experience. So uh, if you if you liked it, you want to hear more. Uh, I got a little I got a little link below, and um, and then I, we get deep into kind of what we do. So, but uh, but I got I'm, I, I got uh, free stuff coming out too. So don't worry about it. Um, I got more stuff coming out. So uh, see you on the next video, Coach.